Now, welcome to another lightning response video, where this time the question comes to us from Darth Rage, who asked, Hey Thor, unrelated to Star Wars, what's your thoughts on the live-action Snow White that is coming out next year? To me, what Disney is doing to their golden child is far worse than they have ever done to Star Wars. It just shows their directors are so scared of rejection of telling their own stories that they have to hijack another, thereby tarnishing the stories we loved growing up. Okay, so in general, I kind of agree with what you're getting at here, but I honestly don't know that this is all being necessarily perpetuated by the writers and directors. I think a lot of them, probably most of them, especially kind of keeping in mind the type of ego it no doubt takes to get to the top in Hollywood as a writer or director. Anyway, I think most of them would rather do their own thing or create something new and original to be put out there rather than doing remakes, sequels, and or working in franchises. Which certainly isn't to say some of them don't want to be, say, working on Star Wars. I've argued before it wouldn't be that hard for Lucasfilm to go out there and find and hire very talented people who wanted to do nothing more in the industry than work on Star Wars. Who would consider working on it the very pinnacle or their endgame goal and would make a whole career out of it and die happy someday. And even Kathleen Kennedy, not too long ago, she recognized and said that they need to find people who actually want to make a commitment to Star Wars, who want to be in it for several years, at the very least, if not even longer. Problem is she, or Lucasfilm, has had this track record of hiring from the, what I like to call, who's hot now crowd. For example, a few years back they went out and got Benioff and Weiss from Game of Thrones fame to make them some films, but they backed out after getting a much better deal from Netflix. They then also got Patty Jenkins to do Rogue Squadron after she had success with Wonder Woman, but that's been put on hold indefinitely while she does other things. Taika Waititi is yet another example of someone who has also made quite the name for himself as of late and got signed up by Lucasfilm to make a film. But after roughly three years now, he's still working on writing it and has been attached to plenty of other projects in the meantime. So basically, I think most people who get into the industry, they do so in order to tell their own stories or to create ones they just want to tell. Which, yeah, makes sense. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not sure how many writers and directors out there are thinking to themselves, you know what I really want to do? I want to remake Snow White. That's what I got into the industry for. Instead, I think it's the only option or options many of them are given unless they are at the top of the game. They are the top dogs in the industry and can actually sell their own ideas to audiences and thus studios based on or off their name alone. Not everyone is a Steven Spielberg or a Christopher Nolan, for example. And so I think it's the studios, it's Disney and the rest of Hollywood essentially, that not only want the sort of guarantee that goes along with an established or recognizable IP or brand, they want to know there's going to be a built-in audience of some kind if they're going to risk potentially hundreds of millions of dollars on a film. Furthermore, they've also put this new level of importance on what they do. Disney doesn't just make wholesome, family-friendly entertainment that inspires you or dares you to dream upon or wish upon a star anymore like they did for basically decades. No, no, now they're literally changing the world and making it a better place with their films. This isn't just the 50th superhero movie to come out in the last 15 years or so, people. This film means something to an entire group of people because it shows they can all be, uh, superheroes? Our movie about this person who looks this certain way falling into the proverbial vat of radioactive goo and developing powers and ultimately beating a bad guy in the end, it gives an entire group or groups of people meaning and self-worth. It validates their very existence. And so everyone should go and watch this movie to support that idea, and if you don't, or worse yet, if you dare criticize it in any way, or our motivations, well, it means you're rejecting the message. It means you hate these people that we were kind enough to represent and prop up in the hope that they would go and see our movie. And therefore, you're a bad, bigoted person, but we'll, like, totally forgive you if you just pay the $15 and go see the movie. And it's kind of silly as it sounds when you put it that way, it's actually a brilliant strategy. It's brilliant to suddenly claim Star Wars films or Marvel movies or even Snow Frickin' White and the Seven uh, people of various and unique backgrounds that they have genuine, profound significance to our society. I mean, it's pretty much the oldest trick in the book to inflate the need, value, and or importance of a product in order to sell it to as many people as possible and to, in the case of Disney, try to make yourself look like a hero to the masses in the process. And look, I'm not trying to say there is zero importance or merit when it comes to something like representation in film. 
or that movies in general cannot be inspirational. They certainly can be. I believe the opposite of those statements. I'm just someone who always questions motivations. I am someone who is always going to be a little leery of someone who beats you over the head trying to convince you about how bad something is, all the while trying to sell you the solution. And so I think what we're seeing today, or what is happening with films and shows, or entertainment in general, is this sort of perfect storm or perfect disaster. It's studios relying heavily upon their established properties in order to minimize risk. And because, yeah, oftentimes these brands sell extremely well. Just look at the top two films of the year so far, Barbie and Super Mario Brothers, and you will begin to understand why they do indeed try to bank on big, famous brands mixed with nostalgia. Anyway, you got the studios who don't want to take risks and who love selling this idea of the importance of what they're putting out there, right, in order to sell it even more. And then you take these writers and directors who oftentimes, I would argue, would rather, again, be doing something else, something original or their own creations. But they're working in these franchises or on these remakes and then using them how they want, doing something different or profound with them in order to make a big enough mark in the industry to get noticed or to break free from having to do them in the first place. Problem is, they also leave a mark, and oftentimes not a very good one, on the franchise itself, which in the long run, despite the studios seemingly not understanding this, but it devalues the property because many of the fans don't like what they've done. You've got these creators who, of course, claim to love and respect the property they're working on, but really don't care that much or just see it as, again, this opportunity to make a name for themselves or to even push a message, perhaps, one that the studios end up backing. Which is just another big problem, I feel. Saying something, conveying your message, tends to be far more important than creativity. We've seemingly lost the desire or ability to create for creativity's sake, to inspire and or entertain with stories for the sake of inspiration and entertaining. Not because you feel the need to educate people about whatever you feel they need to be educated on. And don't get me wrong, a valid argument can certainly be made that a movie, or any sort of story in general, that doesn't try to say anything at all is not one worth watching or listening to or reading. That you could say art is a form of expression, and if you don't try to express anything at all, it's not true art. But those who say they don't want modern politics in their films aren't saying they want mindless or meaningless entertainment. They understand that, yes, there has always been politics in something like Star Wars. Rather, what they're trying to say is they don't want your strong, thinly veiled opinions being the point of the story. They don't want to watch a Star Wars film that overtly says something about the world today that you want to tell them. They want to watch one that perhaps sure can relate to something in the world today on some level, but is more about exploring that galaxy and those characters. Nor do they want to watch a Snow White movie today that tries to convey a message opposite of the one it once did some 80 years ago. Because to them, that's just not Snow White anymore. It's something different and should be called as such. Basically, yeah, there's nothing inherently wrong with wanting to tell new stories in the same old galaxy. I think Star Wars, for example, has plenty of stories left to be told by the people who want to tell them. Or that, when done right, a brand-based nostalgia trip can be quite enjoyable, like with the Super Mario film, for example. It's not the greatest movie I've ever seen, but it was fun and very clearly was meant to honor the property and the fans. And so, as shocking as it sounds, people want to be entertained by their entertainment. They want to be shown anything from the new and unknown, the uniquely different, or to be taken to a familiar place by someone who shares their love and passion for it. But what they don't want is to be reminded of why the world around them sucks according to you. People want to be entertained by a wide open and creative mind, not preached to by a closed one. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think about all this. Is creativity dead or not? Or can it be saved yet? Or you can also ask a question for a future lightning response video. Just start your comment off with hey Thor and ask away. Whatever you choose to do, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.